Hello. One of my subscribers asked me to explain a statement I made in a couple videos where I say my pinky contains more energy than all the particulate matter energy in the entire visible universe. And this is actually a very simple calculation. One of the principal estimates you see for the number of particles in the visible universe is 10 to the 80th protons and electrons. And you'll also see an estimate of the particulate matter in the universe being 10 to the 53rd kilograms. And even if we say, well, the Hubble Deep Field showed there's even more galaxies, and so you may say, well, it's possibly more, okay, maybe more, 10 to the 54th. Or if you say, I want to include dark energy and dark matter, okay, 10 to the 54th kilograms. Then if you want to calculate the quantum field energy density, there's a basic equation for that that's found in any decent text on quantum mechanics. And that's the density, rho, is equal to Planck's constant, the reduced Planck's constant, times omega to the fourth, which is the angular frequency of the quantum fluctuations. And it, you can use the range, but in this case, the low energy end of the range is essentially zero. And then you divide that by 8 pi squared c to the cube, c being the speed of light cubed. So this equation is really standard. So you just plug in the numbers, except what's the numbers? What's, what is the highest energy limit, the smallest size limit? Well, there isn't a natural limit. And if there's no natural limit, rho is equal to infinity, so the infinite energy density in the quantum field. Now, uh, physicists don't like dealing with infinities for obvious reasons, and so people like to use the Planck length as a cutoff frequency to try to make, to have a manageable number. And as I've discussed in previous videos, the Planck length is nonsense because G doesn't make any sense at the Planck scale because the only thing that exists at the Planck scale is quantum fluctuations that don't interact gravitationally, at least not with each other. So, but you can plug in the Planck length or the Planck frequency, the angular frequency, and what you get is rho equals 5.7 times 10 to the 18th giga electron volts per cubic centimeter, <laughs> which is a huge number. And giga electron volts is roughly the same energy in the proton. Uh, the proton's 0.938272 GeV per C squared. So just to give you an idea of how big that energy unit is. Now you can calculate this into mass equivalent units and you get 10 to the 95th grams per centimeter cubed. Um, now Wheeler and Misner did this in one of their books and they came up with 10 to the 94th so you'll see that cited frequently and I'm not sure if they rounded down or, or why it's not 10 to the 95th, like I calculated it, but at, once you get to that level, it doesn't really matter if it's 10 to the 94th or 10 to the 95th. So if you look at the difference, one cubic centimeter of quantum field contains 10 to the 38 grams more in mass equivalent energy than the entire visible universe. And so that's where it comes from, my, my pinky being an estimate of a, roughly a cubic centimeter. So that's, that's where the estimate comes from. It's pretty simple. 10 to 38 sh shows it's a lot more. I mean, it's not just a little more, it's a lot more. The quantum field energy is so great. Well, the size of the energy created a problem for Einstein because he assumed that all energy was part of the general relativity problem, that, that somehow 
all the quantum field energy would be responsible for curving space. And if that were true, my pinky would be a black hole, my head would be a black hole, the earth would be a black hole, the sun would be a black hole. Which also brings up, up an issue with general relativity equations in particular is you can only solve for one region of space at a time and sometimes the selection of that region is arbitrary. So what he didn't realize is that the in quantum general relativity it's the permittivity and permeability of space leading to the speed of light that gives us the basis for what light's doing when you're doing general relativistic analysis. And the basic permittivity of a vacuum, permeability of vacuum, speed of light in the vacuum is due to quantum field interaction. It's due to the quantum fluctuations. So they're already baked in to the basic foundation of light theory. Matter changes the permittivity, permeability, and the speed of light. And so that's a secondary effect. So when you're dealing with general relativity, you don't count the quantum field energy. It's, effectively, you should think of it as zero when you're talking about general relativity. And then only deal with the matter energy when you're trying to determine the general relativistic effects. And this is part of the cosmological constant problem because people say, oh, this is the worst mistake in physics. It's 10 to the 20th, 10 to the 120th wrong. Well, no, Einstein was wrong. It, it, it's just that simple. Einstein was wrong trying to include quantum field energy into general relativity. He shouldn't have done it. And so that's totally unrelated to the cosmological constant problem. I mean, it has plenty of other problems that, be, that cosmologists need to deal with. So anyway, to the extent that the quantum field pushes on bodies, causing them to accelerate, it pushes in the same amount in all directions, so a body doesn't move unless you have pressure differentials, such as when there's two bodies, and then they get pushed together. And we know that because it's necessary to have this quantum field pressure accelerating bodies together in order to explain electromagnetic acceleration. And quantum fluctuations interact electromagnetically. So a foundation of electromagnetics is that you have to have this quantum field based acceleration. But once you have that, it explains gravitational acceleration as well between neutral bodies because the two bodies shadow each other, which is known as the Fatih of Lesage gravity. Although what they didn't know is that it's the quantum field doing the pushing, not some corpuscles they dreamed of. So that's that's the way we really should think of gravity, which is different from the way Einstein did trying to meld it with general relativity. And general relativity primarily deals with photons, which is why we detect general relativistic effects with photons, because it's photon interactions. It's not really gravitational photons interactions is electromagnetic photon interactions and you don't need an equivalence principle. But that's deep diving into a lot more than I intend to talk about in this video. So anyway, as I said, it's a simple calculation. There's more quantum field energy in my pinky than there is stable matter energy in the entire visible universe. And it's a simple calculation to come up with that. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit the like button, share it with your physics friends, and subscribe for my new videos. And I have some books for sale, as always, if you want to learn more about my physics research. And if you buy one of my books, I hope that you learn a lot from that. 
So thanks for watching.